very much. Two introductions, thank you very much. Um, good evening. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the sort of the fear thing behind a bit. We're gonna talk about love for about seven minutes, mm -hmm. if that's okay. Um, and I want to talk to you about love in relationship to travel and adventure. Because I think that we go on these journeys, we go on these travels because we love the world. We love seeing those new views, those new cities. And when we have those unique experiences in nature, you know, we change. We are changed. And we can sit on a mountain top, we can look out over an ocean, and something shifts. Or it may be for you that it's another city, another culture. It may be the simplicity of a road shed. And we come back and we're changed. And sometimes it's on a really superficial level. And I imagine some of you have invited friends around to taste the sort of food from some regional cuisine that you've discovered which you think is delicious. Or you brought back a bottle of some hideous brew from, from somewhere and you said, this is the best thing ever. And it tasted much, much better um, when you were away. But I think when we travel with our hearts and our eyes open, something shifts in us on a more fundamental level. And our response and our attitude is different. And so Pakistan, for instance, is no longer a country full of terrorism, but a completely bonkers, amazing, beautiful, beautiful place with wonderful people. And perhaps the Arctic isn't the best place to build another oil rig. Now, the challenge for me is how do we share these very, very privileged and special experiences with the next generation, with those whose futures we're changing. It would be amazing if we could take every person like this out into the world. You know, take them to the Arctic to see the melting ice. Take them to South Africa to engage them in conservation efforts. Take them to somewhere in the Middle East to understand the Muslim culture. But that's not going to happen. Simply unfeasible. We can't take the four million young people in this country on an expedition. So we have to think of another way. And what we did was we set up Digital Explorer. Let's work with small groups of incredibly talented young people, fantastic scientists doing amazing work out in the field. Let's work with them and scale their experiences live, interactively, online to young people globally. Because we can't have this generation growing up learning through the news media, learning through 20-year-old textbooks, learning through the ideas of politicians about how they should see the world. That learning needs to be direct. If you search on Google, these are the top six images. Pakistan, these are the top six images that come up. I've cut out the sort of maps and the, the flags. But this is how a child would learn about Pakistan if they did <coughs> Google image search. So what we did is we took six teenagers from across the UK. And we took them to Pakistan for two weeks and they visited Madrasa, and they worked with people their own age, and we took them to paint trucks, because trucks in Pakistan are simply amazing. Um, if you ever get a chance to paint a truck, do so. Um, and they saw it with their own eyes. This is one of those students. This is Rawaida. She's a very, very shy young woman from Hendon in North London. So shy, in fact, that after two weeks in Pakistan, this is her addressing the UK government's Foreign Affairs Select Committee in Islamabad. <laughs> Sharing with them her own personal views on Pakistan, UK-Pakistan relations, counter-terrorism policy, etc. And it's wonderful being able to be part of Rawada's journey. She came back, she's spoken to hundreds, to hundreds of young people in and around Hendon. And it's been amazing being part of that journey. But more importantly for me is that we've shared her journey with 50,000 other young people online through blogs, through videos, and eventually through a, a, a complete education program for schools. And we've also been up in the Arctic, working with scientists up there. Mine is 40, a bit nippy. Um, but they're doing amazing work understanding how one of the, what are they called, sentinel systems, or warning systems on our planet are changing. 
and to work with them to share their science every day with schools interactively and to come back to the UK and create an education programme based on what they're doing. And it's not just the nitty gritty science, it's great to get young people involved in the idea of exploration and the idea of adventure. And this is just the beginning, it's just the start. And there's a lot more to go, and it's been a massive privilege working in the Arctic, working in Antarctica and all these other places. But for me, there's an urgency now. 2050 will be another 2 billion people on this planet. Prediction by 2048, coral reefs will be in terminal decline. 2036, no more summer sea ice in the Arctic. And to put that into perspective of young people, you're born today, by the time you are 37, 9 billion people on this planet. By the time you're 35, there could be no more coral reef. By the time you're 23, no more summer sea ice in the Arctic. I'm very soggy for the Christmas up there. So what we're doing at the moment is we're planning a global expedition around the world with young people where we'll create a vision of the world from their point of view. And we'll share that and eventually that will become the basis for a global curriculum and that's available to any child, any school, free. And it's because we build our future not through the fear of what we're going to lose, but through love of what we have. It's an amazing, amazing world out there. Coral reefs, penguins, adventure. So what I'm asking you is how are you going to share your love for a world?